I didn't dare phone this morning because he left and he's still sleeping. So, what? Um, well, he had a friend's daughter. Morning.
Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Archdeacon Jordan is away today. She is on vacation and it is my honor to be your celebrant today. Whether you are here in person or joining us via Zoom or listening to our recorded service later, we are glad you have joined us. Our Zoom host this morning is Michelle. We offer a special welcome to all our visitors and to those who are joining us today for the first time. Please introduce yourselves to me or to our wardens, Margaret or Marguerite after the service. We would appreciate your contact information if you're willing to provide it. We respectfully acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory in the spirit of peace, friendship, and understanding, we walk alongside our Indigenous brothers and sisters on their traditional meeting ground and home of Indigenous peoples, including Cree, Sultral, Blackfoot, Métis, and Nakota Sioux. We give thanks for their hospitality and the opportunity to share common ground. Our service begins at the sound of a bell. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Um, our opening hymn is King of Kings. The Lord be with you. The Spirit is here. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and know the shadow of our hearts. Cleanse and renew us by your Spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ the light of the world. Amen. We stand to glorify the Lord. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Be glorified at home. Be glorified in church. Be glorified in Canada. Be glorified, in Be glorified on earth. Be glorified in heaven. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever. Hallelujah. Amen. As we stand, let us pray the prayers appointed for today. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Reading is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 21. Even though you know these things, and stand firm in the truth, you now have, as long as I live in this body, I will never stop reminding you about these things. I think it is the right thing to do. For our honored chief, creator of three, the chosen one, has made it clear to me that I will soon walk on. I am making it my aim to share these things with you, so that after I have walked on, you will always be able to remember what you have been taught. We were not following the slide of the act of man-made story when we made known to you the power and the coming of our honored chief, creator, secretary, the chosen one. With our own eyes, we saw his great chiefly great, for he received honor and shining greatness from his father and the same spirit, who spoke to him with his voice of honor, saying, this is my much loved son, the one who makes my heart glad. With our own ears, we met the bearers who were with them on the sacred mountain, heard this voice from the spirit world above. We have an even more sure word of the prophecy, one that will guide you well if you follow it, as you would have taught to the son of the God. So stay alert until the day dawns. And the morning star rises in your heart. Above all else, you must understand that no prophecy found in our sacred teachings is a matter of one's own interpretation. For prophecy did not come from the mind of human beings, but from over who through the Holy Spirit spoke the Creator's words. Please join in singing the gospel hymn, Sing to God Made Manifest. Thank you. 
We stand to hear the good news of our salvation as it is written in the gospel according to Luke chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 28. About eight days later, Creator sets free, Jesus took stands on the rock, he takes over, and he shows goodwill up on a mountain to be alone and pray. As he was sending his voice to the great spirit, the appearance of his face began to change and his clothes turned white as snow. Two men appeared and began to talk with him. One was the prophet of old, great spirit as creator, and the other, the ancient lawgiver, drawn from the water. They were shining like the sun and we're talking to him about his crossing over from this life to the next, which would take place in the village of peace, Jerusalem. Stands on the rock and the others were deep asleep, but they woke up and shook the sleep from their eyes. They saw creator sets free with his face and his clothes shining. They also saw the two men standing with him. As the men with him turned to go, stands on the rock, spoke without thinking, wisdom keeper, he said, this is a good place to stay. Let us make three teepees, one for you, one for drawn from the water, and one for great spirit as creator. While he was saying this, a bright cloud from above began to fall on them. Their knees shook as the cloud surrounded them. A voice spoke from the cloud saying, this is my son, the one I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice finished speaking, they saw a creator sets free standing there alone in front of them. After this, they kept silent and told no one at that time what they had seen. This is the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise to Christ our Savior. Let us pray. Almighty God, Graciously grant that your word, which we have heard, may be inscribed inwardly on our hearts. All this we pray for the honor and praise of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The experience in the ninth chapter of Luke is called the transfiguration experience of our Lord Jesus and is recorded in two other gospels, Matthew and Mark. 
Preachers, teachers, scholars, and theologians are all aware that something significant happened, something special and very unique, made an indelible impression upon the minds of those who experienced it. It is as if there is almost a shroud of mystery surrounding this experience. Like all great stories, the transfiguration has unique layers of meaning. If things seem too good to be true, they usually are. We even feel that way about our religion. Anglicans particularly like things done with decency and order. So when the Bible starts talking about a transfiguration with radiant faces and glowing garments and visitors from the dead, we become more than a little suspicious. What is going on here? Would somebody explain it to us so that we can get it into our scientific minds? All along, the question remains, are we willing to let ourselves be engulfed in mystery, inspired by glory, transformed by encounters of a divine kind? That's what the transfiguration of Jesus is all about. Come with me today and let us take a closer look. The transfiguration of our Lord is a call to prayer. Verse 28 says, about eight days later, creator sets free, took stands on the rock. He takes over and he shows goodwill up on a mountain to be alone and pray. In another version of the Bible, we read, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and went up on the mountain to pray. The psalmist in Psalm 121 said, I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121. At Mount Sinai, God gave Moses the law and his face shone brightly. So bright the people were afraid. At Mount Carmel, Elijah exposed the priests of Baal, when God consumed a soaking wet sacrifice and thousands of people came to believe. From Sabbath school, Jesus knew that when you want to meet God face to face, to feel his power and know his grace, you go up the mountain to pray. And he went up the mountain to pray. Jesus is facing a critical decision. If you make the Son of God truly human, he is trying to decide about turning toward Jerusalem. Would he turn his face toward Jerusalem and follow the way of the cross, or would he do otherwise? It was one of the most important choices in his life, and he needed a little help. He needed a lifeline at this moment for the right answer to his Lord. At Jerusalem, there will be humiliation and heartache. At Jerusalem, there is a cross and a brutal crucifixion. It takes no revelation to know that. It will take some divine power to endure that. So he takes his closest friend, Peter, James, and John, and goes up a mountain to pray. In the critical moments of our lives, we can pray. We are spiritual beings capable of communion with God. In times of great need, Prayer is not a last resort, but a first priority. We cannot at least pray. We can first and foremost pray. It is a gift to us, the gift of prayer. Someone said to pray is to stroke the face of God. To pray is to bring our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. To pray is to change. Prayer changes us. To pray is to tap the power of God for the needs of the day. To pray is to enter into a love relationship with the divine. To enter into the most intimate moments of our lives. That is our privilege as people of faith. We are invited to pray. The transfiguration is a call to prayer. 
We need to be a praying people. Transfiguration is an experience of wonder. In verse 29, we read, as he was sending his voice to the great spirit, the appearance of his face began to change and his clothes turned white as snow. Heaven came down and glory filled his soul. Maybe we sold the disciples a little short. I really believe this was a meaningful experience to them. They possibly did not understand its significance then but by the fact that it is recorded in three of our gospels shows that it is that it made an unforgettable impression upon their minds. Why? They had seen the future. They had seen this man called Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth being transformed by the very spirit of God to the point that his face shone with the glory of God and God spoke. He was transfigured. He was not only transfigured then, he would be transfigured later on. They had seen the future. This encounter of a divine kind did two things for Jesus. It gave him an affirmation of who he was, and it gave him the assurance he needed for the mission that was before him. When Jesus was born, the angels proclaimed his birth. A divine had come among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son. When he was baptized, the heavens opened and the dove descended. Now a voice from heaven says in verse 35, voice spoke from the cloud saying, this is my son, the one I have chosen. Listen to him. Can you imagine what it meant for Jesus to hear the voice of the father? the one he wanted to please most of all, to say, I am pleased with you. You're on the right track. You're doing what I want you to do. Go ahead and do it. I think that Jesus went back to the task of setting his face toward Jerusalem of suffering and death and humiliation on the cross. The task had not changed. The circumstances had not changed. His mission and ministry had not changed. The hatred of the groups that were plotting against him had not changed. Nothing had changed. And yet, everything had changed. Because now he was energized and invigorated and encouraged by the Father. If you are setting out on a difficult mission, you need to know who you are and whose you are. And at this moment in Jesus's life, he has a reaffirmation of his true identity. At this moment of his life, he has the assurance of his mission. In verse 30, it says, two men appeared and began to talk with him. One was great spirit as creator and the other, the ancient lawgiver drawn from the water. In another version of the Bible, we read, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Now imagine this. God has brought from heaven both Elijah and Moses, the two greatest historical persons of the Old Testament, symbolic of the law and the prophets. Elijah and Moses have been raised from the dead and the disciples are asleep. In challenging moments of life, we need to know who we are and why we are here. The law and the prophets are behind you on this. Trust your mystic moments. Let them be, for they will bring you to the heart of God. Flying over large bodies of water, Airplane pilots encounter a danger called vertigo. It's a condition where one becomes confused as to what is up, down, left, and right. Safety lies in following instructions instead of inclinations, facts instead of feelings. There comes a time in life when we are going to need some direction beyond ourselves to keep from destroying ourselves. In moments like that, we will be wise to seek direction from God 
the transfiguration is an experience of wonder. The transfiguration is a response of silence. Verse 36, we read, after this, they kept silent and told no one at that time what they had seen. Peter wants to start a building program, freeze the moment, and make a monument to the place. Verse 33, it says, stands on rock, spoke without thinking. In other words, he did not know what he was saying. Here he is trying to make a suggestion in a moment when it would have been better to have been quiet. All the while Jesus is saying, be still and know that I am God. The road to Jerusalem is a necessary journey. Jesus must go from the Mount of Transfiguration to the Mount of Calvary. Salvation calls for a savior, not a shrine. There are some things that are best to be left in the moment. What might we do this summer to cultivate the silence? One thing you can do is to carve out 30 minutes or so of your day so that you can sit and reflect on scripture. I don't know where the Lord might lead you, but I know we need to give him some space where he has a chance to speak. Honor the silence, for in it you will find the Lord. When the stunning reality of the crucifixion hits home, silence may be the only response. There is a place of full release near the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace near the heart of God. The transfiguration is a call to prayer, a call to experience wonder, and a call to be silent and listen to God. The transfiguration of Jesus is a sign of the presence of God's glory alive in our world. We behold the glory of God. Trust your mystic moments. Let them be, for they will bring you to the heart of God. Amen. We stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and is buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the light everlasting. Amen. Please assume whatever position is most prayerful for you as we have the intercessions, the prayers of the people. Of our leaders of our country rule with righteousness. Amen. Lord have mercy. In justice, we are shield and defend us. Amen. May the country have peace and the people be blessed. May the flock and the birds prosper and the fish abound in our lake. 
they will feel the fruitful and they will harvest plentifully. May we in our energy turn towards peace. Amen. May the love of the Father touch the lonely, the believing, and the suffering. Lord have mercy. May the path of the Lord be stretched to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord of mercy is with us. Hear the words of challenge and comfort our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. Come on to me, all who are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors, and intend to live a new life following the way of Jesus, come with faith and take the Holy Sacrament to strengthen you. Let us reverently confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your son. We make us and lead us by your spirit, the comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in this kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming but assured, not trusting ourselves, but your word. We hunger and thirst for righteousness and ask of our hearts to be satisfied with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Just a few announcements this morning. First of all, are there any birthdays this week? Our granddaughter Sadie. Sadie, yeah. Grandson? Yeah. You, Pat? Oh, goodness. 39 again? <laughs> Good. Michelle, your birthday too? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Our son, William Jr., is his birthday today. Oh, great. And my granddaughter's birthday was this past Friday. Past He's Friday. 29. Oh, good. Yeah. Anyone else? Did I miss anyone? Okay, we'll say a blessing later for every birthday. Now, are there any wedding anniversaries? Yes. 59 years, 59 years with Paul. That's, you deserve applause. No, we love Paul. Another yeah. one, Tom, Tom, <laughs> over here. 
Oh, yeah. 28 years on Friday. 28 years on Friday. Congratulations. <laughs> Should I miss anyone for wedding anniversaries? Are there any on Zoom? Birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. We'll say a blessing for everything here after I finish the announcements. Just a reminder that there's no morning prayer tomorrow on Zoom. It's August the 7th. It's a statutory holiday and it's Heritage Day. And of course, the parish office will be closed as well. A reminder again about Compassion Camp at Good Shepherd, which will run from August 28th to September 1st. And the day is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Compassion Camp is a five-day summer program for children ages five and up. Children over 14 will get to participate in camp as a leader in training. Everyone attending camp, including volunteers, will receive a t-shirt and sticker. Registration is open. Save your child a spot with a $25 deposit, and your deposit will go toward the total cost of camp registration. The registration fee is $75 per camper. Family registration fee is first camper $75, and additional campers are $50 each. Registration deadline is Friday, August the 18th. You can register later. It's just that you may not have your t-shirt on the first day of camp. And there is registration subsidies may be available through the support of RAMS. Please speak with Archdeacon Jordan for more information about financial support for Compassion Camp. I think we're still looking for volunteers for Compassion Camp. Wow, that's wonderful. That's a really good turnout. That's good. So if you have an opportunity, pop by and volunteer. You will receive a camp t-shirt, safe church training, and our deepest gratitude. The Edmonton Corn Maze. Tuesday, August the 22nd at 11 a.m., the Good Shepherd Fellowship Group is organizing a group trip to the Edmonton Corn Maze. If you would like to participate, please sign up on the form in the North X. Tickets can be ordered in advance online for $14 plus GST, or you can purchase your ticket once we arrive at the corn maze for $15 plus GST. Now the fellowship group will be providing transportation to and from the corn maze at no extra cost. And they plan to meet at the Good Shepherd parking lot at 11 a.m. and anticipate returning to Good Shepherd by 6 p.m. We apologize in advance, no children are allowed as our volunteer drivers do not have child care seats. Other upcoming events are the Heritage Block Party, which will be on Saturday, August the 26th. Look over your favorite recipes for a truly delightful and interesting potluck dinner. Look forward to this event more details will be coming soon. Transforming Questions, a 10 session course designed to help participants engage basic questions of the Christian faith through teaching and conversation. The course has been prepared by the diocese and Good Shepherd will be one of the se uh, several hosts. First session will be in late September, more details to come. And we will be having Welcome Back Sunday. And we'll, there will be more details about Welcome Back Sunday coming out very soon. And now our birthday blessings. Yeah.
Okay. And our birthday blessing. May the light of the Lord shine upon all who have birthdays this week and grant you all happiness on your birthday and for many years to come. The Lord make his face to shine upon all of you on this day. Bear witness to the love of the Lord and rejoice in the abundance he brings. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our wedding anniversary blessings. Dear Lord, to all who are celebrating the wedding anniversary this week, we ask your blessings over them and their marriages itself. May they all seek you each day and grow in their love for one another. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our offertory hymn is, This is Amazing Grace. All things come from you, O Lord, and of our own have we given. We remain standing for thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? He is. Is Christ among us? He is. 
is the spirit here. He is. This is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to Christ. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, and remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We are made kin through his blood. We have died together, we will rise together, we will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world. Perfect sacrifice, once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. This is a feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain begun his reign. Hallelujah. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Draw near with faith. Christ is the hope. And we are the scatters. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. I'll bless you. Bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God's perpetual light shine upon you now and remain with you always. Thank 
Ruby? Today we have the sending of the Eucharistic visitor. Ruby will be taking communion to Edith. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth, bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We, we who are many are one body. Because, because we all share one bread, one, one cup. Amen. I invite you to please stand for the sending of the congregation. Almighty God, Eternal Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. All of our problems, we stand to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we stand to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we stand to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we set on the risen Lord. Christ, the son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is the same love, the same love. The humble raise their heart. You choose the weak and lay them strong
Go out into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I'm not. 